Hello, everybody, and welcome into Dick By Stadium here, Auburn Hills, Michigan, for today's ECNL Ohio, Vo Ohio Valley Boys Soccer Matchup as the Nationals taking on the Ohio League. John and Turner alongside Dan Sickrad. Excited to have you along here for the ride today. Again, Auburn Hills, Michigan is the place to be, and we're excited to have you here on the Michigan Soccer Network. Uh, Dan, man, we're excited to have uh, some youth soccer here on the network. Yeah, we are currently looking directly onto the surface of the sun, straight east. Very, very windy out here today, but yeah, we are excited to be here. We'll see if the wind has an effect on, on these games as they progress throughout the morning and afternoon hours. That we will is uh, we're getting excited to have you along here. Uh, we are trying to stream simultaneously here, and uh, we are having some some difficulties with the second stream. So if you are trying to tune in to watch the game number two, that is going to be recorded right now. We're going to try and figure this out here for game number two. We only had an hour to get in this press box to get things set up. So we're working through that, but that game will be available on our YouTube channel here in a little bit. Uh, but uh, either way, uh, uh, we're excited to have you along here today. So Nationals taking on Ohio Elite. Uh, we were given Ross. We were not given starting 11, so we will try to do our best here in regards to who is starting on the field here right now in this game number one. This is the 08 uh, uh, teams here. As we are officially underway, we'll start our clock. And underway, Nationals will be in their white kits and blue shorts, and in the light blue and black trim shorts will be Ohio Elite. We'll run through these rosters here in full. You got Chase Blackmore, Caden Dem De De Demopoulos, Jack Dobner, Gavin Faro, Alec Franz, Joey Gaten, Julian Gibbs, Emra Hersostovich, Hersostovich, Daniel Kadu, Emmett Kane, Jack Kilpatrick, Brennan Klein, John Lucas Patike. Brennan Sesti and Anthony Shembecki, Daniel Stevenson, John Paul Yatuma, and Brian Yu are the Nationals rosters. And we'll take a look at Ohio Elite. You got Zach Arnold, Johnny Baca, Jack Bannister, Vinny Carnival, Mitch Crisman, Ivan Elthers, Aaron Irvin, Alex Irvin, Nick Farler, Joey Generera, Colin Komet, Joey Kurtz, Carson Runyon, Brody Schischer, Elijah Warner, Avery Washington, Davion Washington, and Colin Wilson are the Ohio Elite side. And the Ohio Elite is from Westchester Township in southern Ohio, about 20 miles straight north along I-75, north of Cincinnati, so between Cincinnati and Dayton, pulling a lot of players from that part of Ohio in southeastern Indiana. And of course, the Nationals are headquartered in nearby Shelby Township, Michigan, about 15 miles northeast of here. And Auburn Hills is about 20 miles northwest of downtown Detroit, in the middle of suburbia. Again, if you are trying to tune in and watch the, the live feed of the other game, the game taking place behind us, at least the 09s, uh, that game is currently not streaming. We are having some technical difficulties with that game. That game actually is uh, the, uh, the 11s, I apologize. Well, this is the 08s, as this is out for the first corner here of the match. So first corn opportunity here for National Soccer Club. It's a good ball, back post, up a, in the box, almost cleared out. Now a one shot, and that one's good, and Nationals are up. one nothing. So just like that, three minutes into this game, and the Nationals have a one nothing lead over Ohio Elite. And Dan, I, I'll tell you, man, it's it's hard to see in this sun. <laughs> We're trying. It, it was a corner kick into a wild gold mouth scramble. The ball bounced around a little bit. Go, 
Not quite sure who got a, a foot on that one, but take a look at it. Hopefully have that for you here in a moment. So number 11 got that one. Number 11, that's Herstanovich. Herstanovich. Emra. That was John Lucas. So oh, why in that far side? That goal coming on the first corner kick, first shot on frame of the, of the morning. One for one, huh? Great batting average. Nationals continue to press. There's a stiff wind. Kind of heading in an easterly direction. So we'll see how that plays out over the course of these six games here today in Auburn Hills, Michigan. We've had a ton of rain here in the Great Lakes State here the past week. Especially the last two days, but... The clouds finally dispersed around 8, 9 p.m. last night. Hardly a cloud in the sky this morning. But again, the wind will have a huge factor on these contests. If your first time stopping by, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. You know, we, we encourage and expect engagement from our fans wherever you're watching near and far. So uh, we'd love to have you let us know your thoughts about the broadcast. As far as any help with pronunciations, we know that we weren't given those as part of that. That's not uncommon uh, at the youth game. We don't necessarily get the pronunciations of the players, but that that's okay. But let us know your thoughts. So we have our chat is available, so hop on in the chat. Another corner kick here for the Nationals. Six minutes into this one, a one nothing game in favor of the Nationals. This one comes in. It's a good high ball up into the six. Cleared off the line. Another shot. That one somehow finds its way just wide. So almost 2 nothing. That's two set pieces, Dan, that the Nationals have been very dangerous on. They scored on the first one off that loose ball inside the box, and then Almost got another one on loose ball. Yeah, sometimes throughout the course of a game, you might not get a lot of chances in terms of the flow of the game, but off restarts, when those opportunities arise, you have to capitalize. The Nationals are one for two in that department here in the first 10 minutes of the 08 matchup. So another opportunity here once again. I believe that was a goal scorer in Hurstanovich. Emra is part of the 2008 side here. Coached by Zane Pollock. You can see the ball when it's high in the air, just kind of stalling out. As that wind con continues to press to the east and southeast directions. So now here come Ohio Elite. Getting in light blue kits. The light blue numbers in the back of their jerseys makes it easier for us to read their names and numbers off their jerseys. Something we talk about a lot, Dan, on these broadcasts is how how uh, when when designing uniform kits, no one really thinks about you know the broadcaster in mind, <laughs> right? About how easy it would be for us to to maybe see their names, but you know, to each their own. The I've sun obviously not helping out either, uh, but this uh, free kick. Uh, I thought it was number four in the back of the jersey. There, that is a number four. That is, that's uh, Mitch Chrisman on the ball now. Looking to play one up top. Looks as though they're playing a 4-3-3 this morning, our Ohio Elite. Did not have a chance to talk with the head coach for Ohio Elite. And now here comes Hurstanovich. Now there'll be a shot that's deflected on its way through, but Nationals will end up taking this one towards the near post, and that one's cleared away. Let's chase Blackmore, who is on the ball. Blackmore now once again. John Paul Yutuma. 
Cycles his way back. Beautiful day. High of 63 degrees here today in Michigan. Yesterday was, I think it was a high of 53 and rainy and windy. We had a wind advisory here up until about midnight last night. Created a lot of havoc as that was deflected on its way towards goal and out for another corner. You know, if you're a higher elite, you got to find a way here to be decisive in, in the box. So far, they've almost given up two goals on the first two corners of this match, Dan. Yeah, and this will be the third corner of the morning. Nashville scored on the very first corner, which was turned into the very first shot of the contest. And then they had another corner about two minutes after that. Now we're in a third. Ohio Lead has had a hard time clearing the ball once the ball is served into the box. Got some good targets there for the Nationals. You got Alec France right there at back post. We've noticed is there they put these high ones up in the air. You'll notice that the high floater. Daniel Cadu's also in there as well. Jack Kilpatrick, as this one comes in, goalkeeper will make the grab for Ohio Elite. So that's a good sign on the third corner for Ohio Elite. You mentioned Dan, Ohio Elite is from Westchester, Ohio, is that what you said? Westchester Township. It's just off I-75. Looks like about 15, 20 miles straight north of Cincinnati. So far it's been all nationals. So that's a foul, straight and foul. Three to nothing on shots, one nothing on frame, three to nothing on corners. So a little history, Dan, here about Ohio Elite. In the spring of 2002, a small group of people came together with an idea of a new youth club in Cincinnati. That was Jeff Beckman, Jerry Chambers, Doug Conway, Doug Bracken, and Tim Leslick. Uh, Lesiak uh, had a series of discussions about the state of the game and the youth level in Cincinnati. Uh, and that all started just some 22 years ago. And uh, they have obviously risen the ranks. They've done a fantastic job in Ohio, obviously being a part of the ECNL programs, the elite, um, the elite national, right? You talk about that. The, uh, and, and what this ECNL is all about. So it's, it's pretty cool. But they, they wanted to focus more on the youth game and not so much on the business. Um, those conversations brought about the common agreement where they desired to start a youth club that would not only rely on parent volunteers, but rather on business and soccer professionals. So they wanted it to be a business uh, and, and soccer professional type club. Uh, and that's why they have done such a fantastic job. It's a good ball inside. They're looking for Kadu. Daniel Kadu up top for the Nationals 08. We, we had a chance to see Mr. Kadu play a few times this past fall. Troy Athens High School became the Division I state champions. Jew is a rising sophomore in the state of Michigan. Combining the club and high school circuits, one of the better sophomores. There's a shot just over the crossbar. Had to get that field mic sound in. We were missing some of the field noise, so we want to get that in there. 14th minute, Nationals 08. Up one nothing over the Ohio Elite 08. It's a third minute goal. Scored by Emre Kristanovic. Go, 
Now here come Ohio Elite. A hard tackle, but still main pain possession by Ohio Elite. And down by the goal line, the end line, and that one does not go out, but it's cleared away. A little battle, a physical battle on that far side. That would be good. A foul called. So we appreciate you tuning in here today and watching this on the Michigan Soccer Network. A great shout out to our partners. This part of the match is brought to you by Granite City Food and Brewery. Granite City Food and Brewery. Eat good eats, drink good drinks, have good times. Visit Troy location at the corner of I-75 and 16 Mile or the corner of 7 Mile and Haggerty in Northville. Check out their daily specials. Or visit GCFB.com today. In the Granite City Troy locations, only about 15 minutes southeast of this location. Just up 75. Yeah. Small stop or short stop on the way back to Cincinnati if yes. you're an Ohio Elite fan. Highly recommended. They got some great food. You know, it's all made from scratch. You know, I, I as someone who now is a newly diabetic, and I we talk about new <laughs> diabetic. I have to, I have to maintain, you know, different diet now. And they have a, you think about, it, they have great salmon. They've got great steak. Um, there are breweries, so they make their own beer. It's, it's a really, uh, it's a really cool. Experience. It's, it's one of those places that you know anyone can go to and enjoy. They got a Sunday brunch, you know, from like nine to two. You know, you can't, you can't not have their brunch. I mean, their, their eggs are. And they got an omelet bar. You know, they got it all. So. And they do have those chicken Popeyes. <laughs> they do have those chicken Popeyes. I've talked about that on multiple broadcasts here in the last uh, six months. So we'll play that one short inside the box. We'll Ohio will eat. Good, hard battle. It might be a shot from distance. No, that one's held back. Still inside the 18 and then cleared away. Getting ready to enter the 17th minute of the first game here. The Nationals 08 and the Ohio Elite 08. Nationals up 1-0. Courtesy of a third minute goal. Coming off a wild goal, Moss scramble on a corner kick. The Ohio Elite has had trouble getting the ball into the final third of the field. They have yet to attempt a shot or gain a corner kick against the Nationals 08. So we'll work this around that back line, Will, with the Nationals. That started with, with number three. And Jack Kilpatrick. Up that far side. So the Nationals and the white kits are going left to right on your screen. The Ohio lead and the blue kits are going right to left. It looks like black, Dan, the shorts, but I think they're more like a dark blue. Yeah. Just because of that sun. At Dick Pye Stadium, the press box does face directly east, so we are looking directly at the sun about above the 45-yard line. I mean, we do most <laughs> of our games at night, so yeah. we actually prefer the east eastern-facing press box because the sun's obviously sets in the west. We're not looking right. at the sun at nighttime, but there are days like this where you're like, you know what? I wish we were in a west side press box, you know, but, you know, what can you do? Westerly-facing press box. Yeah, majority of the press boxes, it seemed like in the Detroit area, do face east. And a lot of high schools and colleges. We're going to try and get this next game, uh, at the next set of games, uh, on maybe Facebook. or I, I, will, I will push those out um, here uh, in a different way. So we'll, we'll try that um, uh, a, a little bit later here uh, and see if we can get the next round of games uh, at the 9.45 hour uh, to, uh, to run um, simultaneously. So we apologize again. We just, it's one of those things where we, we try to get into a press box a couple hours before a game starts. Isn't always possible. So 
But another corner kick. This is the fourth corner of the match. Again, the Nationals scored a goal on their first corner of the match. And they've been dangerous every single time. This one comes in. It's a well-driven ball towards that front near post. Good save by the goalkeeper. Ball still in the air. Another shot. Another save. And that one is now going to be cleared away. So good work there from the goalkeeper from Ohio Elite. And equally good work from the Nationals to get two opportunities in there on the corner kick. Yeah, two close range shots, both pushed away. That second one, though, that was a doozy. Just got his arm up yep. to great, make that save. Great volley from about eight yards out through traffic. Ohio Elite denied that opportunity of the Nationals. We're still at a one nothing advantage for the Michigan-based Nationals 08. In the 20th minute of the first game here. In beautiful Auburn Hills, Michigan. You can hear that wind now, <laughs> a little kind of blowing through. It almost seems like it's picking up. It is easterly, southeasterly wind. No rain on the radar today as, as opposed to the previous week, but the wind could have an effect on the, some of these games. Oh, that's a good cross into the box. He was looking for Demopolis. Demopolis. And that one will go out. And that third minute goal was scored by number 11, Emery Hurstanovich. Be back here tomorrow as well. Now tomorrow, a tale of two days here at 62 is the high. It is gonna be mostly sunny here throughout the day today here in Michigan. Tomorrow, 76 degrees, partly cloudy. So uh, talk about a difference in days. Uh, I mean, we were in the mid-40s yesterday. Dan, yesterday, I, you know, normally I talk. Dan's the director of, our, of, of, of news here for MSN. He'll be writing recap stories and, uh, and articles about not only this weekend, but also uh, all things uh, soccer here in the state of Michigan. But, Dan, you know, yesterday I didn't call you for a couple hours. Played a little afternoon hooky. Went and watched a new movie uh, that came out yesterday with the wife. Uh, and um, I, I don't go see it. I, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't. We don't even not, know what it is yet. You're already telling us not to go see don't, it. Don't, <laughs> go see, don't go see it. Don't go see it. So the ball moving around. And that's number four once again. That's Mitch Chrisman. Ooh, a hard collision there. No foul, says the referee, as that's picked up by Chase Blackmore for the Nationals. Yeah, it's this new movie. It's called Civil War. It's not worth it. To be fair, I was, before I even went to the movie, I was kind of having a reservation about seeing it just because of the, the, you know, just the name of the movie just doesn't get me. You know, I just don't like the but wife wanted to see it. We went and saw it. Not not worth it, Dan. Don't don't go see it. I will take your advice. This is Vinny Carnival. Back to Chrisman. Plays that inside. We'll continue to work it around. 23rd minute, Nashville still holding on to that one nothing advantage. Courtesy of a third minute goal from Emra Gersonovic. And the national defense has been holding strong, yet to give up a single corner or even a shot attempt. 23 minutes into this contest. Oh, a little seam ball in there. Pick it up as the goalkeeper for the Nationals. Not a bad ball, maybe a little less pace. That might have made a bit more dangerous, but Nonetheless, Nationals do what they have done so far and just keep shots off the stat chart. That was John Lucas Pedicke. Given away, that's was number five for the Nationals, John Paul Yatuma. Yeah. 
Tried to spin out of that was Daniel Cadu. As you mentioned, that, that's not a foul. Interesting. A little, more, a little more physicality there, and maybe thought maybe a foul was coming. Did not come. Yatuma now. Yatuma, that's a far post shot that blocked on its way through. Six shot attempt for the Nationals so far. Who have yet to concede even a single shot attempt. By the Ohio Elite 08. 25th minute. Here on a windy but cloudless Saturday morning here in north suburban Detroit. Auburn Hills Avondale High School is the site, the place to be. Stanovich. This one's shot, and that's deflected. That was not her Stanovich, I apologize. That was number 16, Gavin Farrow. Gavin Farrow, also a member of the Troy Athens Red Hawks. Had a chance to call his name here uh, during during that playoff run. Uh, obviously, Daniel could do. Uh, we, we talked about that. Again, the Trey Athens Red Hawks uh, won the 2023 Michigan High School so uh, Athletic Association State Championship. Their first one since 2019. Again, you got some big targets there for the Nationals in the box. Daniel Cadu, Alec Franz. Another good ball towards Franz. That one's cleared away. Arstanovich, he'll come over now. When you have all the players kind of standing together there on those restarts inside the box, you can see that the Nationals do have a slight height advantage over their counterparts from Cincinnati. So we'll see some subs coming in. Now in the 27th minute. Well, it's always interesting when they, again, you, you get numbers, but there's not a 23 in our roster. <laughs> it's okay. Sometimes players forget their jerseys and they just happen to have an extra one. But Unfortunately, in the youth club circuit and the high school circuit, jersey numbers aren't always accurate. Played up top. Ituma, and that one's cleared away and out for a throw in. So 27 minutes in, a third minute goal by the Nationals. All the difference in this one. You're watching ECNL Ohio Valley Boys Soccer on the Michigan Soccer Network. John Turner, Dan Stickrat. Excited to have you along for the ride today. Up top, camera operator Sam Fisher. Ryan Gagnon is on field two, bringing that coverage. Again, that one will be pre recorded for game one. We will get game two up on uh, our social media. We'll post that out to the world here momentarily. Nationals in the white and blue kits and Ohio Elite in the blue and navy blue kits. Nationals hold a 7 to nothing shot advantage, 3 to nothing on frame, and 5 to nil on corner kicks. They do have the one nothing advantage in the department that matters most, the scoreboard. Third minute goal. We are now in the 28th minute of this 08 clash with the Ohio Elite and the Nationals. You know, Dan, we're so used to calling the men's and women's amateur games college where we know the halves are 45 minutes. We know a high school is a 40-minute uh, half. Uh, JV's 35 minutes. Uh, do you have any idea how long these halves are? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just curious. My guess is this is a 40-minute half, but I, I don't know. They've changed it so many times over the years. As this ball is looked to put into the box, and that one will go wide for a goal kick. So A lot of it boils down to age group. Yep. And what level of club soccer the games are. The higher the level, sometimes they do extend to 45 minutes. 
So this part of the match is brought to you by FC Barcelona Camps. FC Barcelona Soccer Camp is coming again this June 10th through the 14th to Legacy Sports Center in Brighton, Michigan. To learn more and register for that camp, head over to camps.fcbarcelona.us. Use promo code FCBMSN24 to save $30 off registration as Utuma puts one into the seam and not enough pace. Almost one back. He was looking there for John Lucas Pataki. Emmett Kane is number 23. We appreciate it. It's 40 minute half. See, we're getting some, we're getting some help. Thank you. <laughs> it doesn't even make it simple. Every game is the same length. But John, you know, they're like they're like 13 year olds out. They can't play for 45 minutes. Just use your subs. <laughs> right? I mean, that's what they're for. Make them all the same. Same field. Make everything the same. Wouldn't that make the game better? No, Dan, no thoughts? I'm curious your thoughts at home. Let's make the game the same length. No. <laughs> Parents are like, no, we want these games in and out. We want them a half hour. Make a 60-minute make a game, get in and out, you know, and go get some lunch. 90 minutes is a long game. But Emmett Kane is number 23, and he's actually on the ball right now. See, it's nice when we have a conversation with the viewers at home. They can tell us when we don't know something. It's fantastic. So just about 10 minutes left to go here in this opening half. It's the National Soccer Club with a 1-0 lead. Again, they're based out of Shelby Township. They've got 16 locations throughout the state of Michigan. Yeah, it's one of the fastest growing clubs in the Midwest. Definitely considered one of the big, big four here in the state of Michigan in terms of size. Shem Kemby was on the ball there. Now, ball out wide. Looking to put this one towards top of the 18. Cleared away by Ohio Elite. They have not really been able to get anything going here at all in this half. And that's really good work defensively. Really making things compact are the Nationals in Miller Park. And this is not a wide field. This is your typical high school field. Probably about 70 yards wide. You get to some of the indoor facilities here in Michigan. They've got 90-yard field, wide fields, 80-yard wide fields. So that 10 yards makes a difference. You don't think it does, but it really does. They play quick. Someone goes out wide. Yeah, the comments, David Kane says, yeah, yeah, field the same length would be great. So the same same length of time for all the games and uh, the same size field. Uh, again, if you did that, if you made the field size the same for everything, you know what that would do? It would make the game easier to, to, to learn. Because you go from a field like this where maybe it's 65 to 70 yards wide, Dan, and then you go to a field that's 55 yards wide, or you go to a field that's then 80 yards wide. There's a difference in how you play. Yeah, I mean, if you if, and if you're based in that situation, like three consecutive weekends on the club circuit where you're playing in three different s states, three different sites, field sizes are completely different. The way you have to approach your practice, prepare for your opponent is completely different. That it is. That it is. So 33rd minute. It's a shot there, and that somehow is the goalkeeper gets tied up. And so a foul was called. I believe that was Shimkembe that was in that collision, number 12. Again, if it's your first time stopping by, we appreciate it. Also appreciate our sponsors. Did you know that we now offer player recruitment videos here at the Michigan Soccer Network? That's right. We launched our player recruitment highlight videos program. Our programs are designed for every player's needs and budgets. Whether you are already have a video and want more exposure or need to start from scratch, the Michigan Soccer Network is ready to help you get to where you want to go. To learn more, visit michigansoccernetwork.com and select the highlight videos tab at the top of the page to learn more about all the things we're doing with our highlight, pro highlight videos, our recruitment videos, and more. I didn't know they sponsored uh, our soccer games, Dan. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> I 
man, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I kind of missed this. But we have not gotten, and I've done obviously my broadcasting for you know, uh, you know ESPN and things like that over the last few months. But haven't gotten back in the booth to do a soccer game since February. So it's been it's been fun to get back in. It's you know I, I still feel a little bad because we don't know these players' names and it's hard to see their numbers. So we really can't give them justice like we normally do in a game. But it's Dan. It's fun to get back in here. Yeah, it's been a couple of months for me as well. But we'll get we'll get our. Great taste of some club games here in Auburn Hills, Michigan. So we got simultaneous games going on uh, fields. The main field here is at the at the football track stadium, and behind us to the west is a secondary altar field. Avondale School Districts built this new complex about a dozen years ago. Great complex here, about 20 miles north west of downtown Detroit. So five minutes to go here in half number one. I don't know how much stoppage time we're going to see. I, I'd imagine not much. Um, but, uh, but either way, uh, five minutes to go in this number one. Half number one, third-minute goal scored by Emre Rostanovich. Now you Tuma. And there's another shot that goes up and over. The Nationals definitely caught the Ohio Elite 08 snapping to start the game. Third-minute goal. It's the only... Tally of this first half. So Emmett Kane is number 23. So then who's number 13? Because I've got Emmett Kane is 13 on the roster. Oh, there's two 13s. So, okay. Good to know. 36 minute. So. Is Brandon. So Brandon Sesti is number 13 on the other side then if. Emmett Kane is number 23, so that was number Brendan Sesti that just took that shot. That was Brendan Klein, and now all the way back. Good ball moving on that far side. Nationals definitely had more control of the play here in the first half. Yutuma, good ball. Good cutback. Put into the box, looking for Yutuma, and that's a shot and a diving save by the Ohio League goalkeeper. If you're watching from home, love to know who this goalkeeper is for Ohio Elite so we can give him some justice. That's a good heavy collision there as Kadu is slow to get up. Ran right into a brick wall. And then now a foul being called. Wow. Yeah, he's letting him play physical. This part of the broadcast brought to you by Julie Zahn Real Estate. This part of the bro the real estate market can be messy and confusing. When to buy, when to sell, home inspections, appraisals, all of it. You're looking to whether you're looking to buy or sell, you can call or text Julia Zahn today. That's 248-422-2562. That's 248-422-2562. Julia Zahn is your real estate professional. Proud to announce here earlier in Fe well, late February, into March, we announced our new partnership with the Michigan State Youth Soccer Association. We'll be doing all their state cup final games starting uh, this fall from Legacy Sports Center. We're super excited about that, about bringing more better coverage and evolving the coverage of the state finals along with pregame and postgame coverage as well as preview shows and much more. So to learn more about that, head over to michigansoccernetwork.com. Check out our news side, MSYSA, and our new relationship partnership with them. We're really excited to be part of that, U13 through U19. What I'm really excited about is that igloo thing down there. I wanted to get one of those things, Dan. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. We haven't actually shown it. There's this blue igloo that's sitting right down at midfield. Uh, it's those little pods that you like to put your chair in and protect you from the elements. There's one just sitting right in front of us. Um, I've contemplated about getting those for us here for when we in the press box because sometimes the press boxes can be a little can be a little rough. I think those were designed originally for things like ice fishing, but yep, they have many many f <laughs> functions. And that they do is going to the business end of this first half. Still looking 
easterly, so directly onto the surface of the sun. We are in the 39th minute of this ECNL 08 matchup featuring the Cincinnati area-based Ohio Elite and the Shelby Township, Michigan-based Nationals. One nothing for the Michigan home side, Nationals, third minute goal. The only score of the half. So a free kick coming up here as we're in the 40th minute. The Nationals defense has been superb here so far, not conceding a single shot attempt or corner kick in this game. Inside the final 30 seconds plus stoppage time. You know, Dan, I already had the, the clock set up for 40 minutes. I was just looking at it and it's already been set up. <laughs> it's didn't, that's pretty good. I didn't even have it prepared. So, and so you got uh, Kelly Dobner saying, let's go Nationals. We appreciate you tuning in and watching here today. It's 1 nothing. It's a goal kick coming up here for Ohio Elite. Game is live on our Michigan Soccer Network YouTube channel. For stories and news related information on the soccer community across the state of Michigan, feel free to visit our Look at website this opportunity now. Is this one shot? That's going to go in. So the first shot of the morning for Ohio Elite ends in a goal. And just like that, it's a 1 1 game. 40 24. In the stoppage time, Ohio Elite gets a breakaway goal to tie this game moments before the half. So 1-1, one, one. we don't got that? I want to say it was number five. Looked like five. It's really hard to tell looking into the, into the sun. But. So this one put into the box and right in the hands of the goalkeeper for Ohio Elite. I do believe that was number five, but not the way you want the half to end if you're Zane Pollock and the Nationals. You know, you take a lead early into this game. And again, they always say it's, you know, it's the first, the first 10 minutes of each half, it was a 10 minutes of each half and the last 10 minutes are, are the most important and crucial because it sets the tone for, you know, how the game's going to go and it obviously sets the tone for how the game is going to go into the second half and allowing a goal with just under, you know, a minute into stoppage time or actually, you know, is, is a, a difference maker. At least it could be here going into the second half, giving Ohio Elite some signs of life. Because they have, to be fair, they have not really shown a ton of of consistent offensive pressure in yeah, this game. They've had very little pressure, very little possession. You know, the Nationals, as we wind up the first half, nine to one on total shots, five to one on frame, five to zero on corner kicks. Ohio Elite was able to cash in on their only opportunity the first half to tie the game one to one at the 40-24 mark. The Nationals did score in that third minute goal. So Jonathan won the one at the half of this 08 clash with the Ohio Elite and the Nationals. That's right, it's 1-1 here at the half. 40 minutes to go, who's gonna win? Ohio Elite or National Soccer? We'll find out after this. Michigan locations in Troy and Northville. Serves made from scratch food, brews in-house beer, and even has brunch every Sunday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. To learn more about their daily specials or to book a private party, visit GCFB.com. Make sure you head over to Granite City in Northville at the corner of Seven Mile and Haggerty or the Troy location at 16 Mile and I-75. Are you looking to play at the next level? MSN is now offering player recruitment videos. 
and we are excited to partner with you and your family in getting you to the next level. To learn more about our packages and what we offer, head over to the michigansoccernetwork.com. Remember, your journey starts with a click. Now Worrell has a good cutback from him. He'll fire one, and that's going to go in! of Michigan student athletes, the Student Advisory Council's role is to convey the message of how high school sports are supposed to be played. We were responsible for helping the MHSAA maintain a positive and healthy atmosphere in which interscholastic students can thrive. We believe athletes should be competitive, sportsmanlike, and excel academically. We believe students in the stand should have fun, but not take the focus away from the game. We believe coaches should act as teachers, helping student athletes develop while still keeping high school sports in perspective. We believe that parents should always be positive role models and be supportive of their child's decisions. We believe officials commit their own time to high school sports. And respect should always be shown and given to them. The most important goal for student athletes is to enjoy high school sports while maintaining a high level of respect for all those involved in the games. Enjoy, enjoy the game! game. to take your game to the next level. Did you know that MSN is now offering player recruitment videos? Our packages include a player profile where you show your preferred positions, the club, the league or school that you play in, your current coach contact information, and more. The highlight videos could be self-submitted 15 to 30 clips that will be put into a three to seven minute long video. Video review of your huddle, VO, or other platforms that you might have video on, as well as for an additional charge, MSN can come out and film games for you to create those clips. Our coach evaluation process, which is also an additional charge, where we have college coaches from various levels across the United States that will review your game film and provide feedback on how to improve that film, as well as also evaluating your play and what you can improve on. To learn more about our packages and what we offer, head over to the michigansoccernetwork.com. Remember, your journey starts with a click. Our mission is to help players take their game to the next level and reach their potential. Not only do we help develop fundamental technical skills such as ball control in tight spaces with different surfaces, dribbling at speed and changing direction, using a variety of 1v1 skills to create space, receiving on a half turn, hook turn, and out of the air, finishing off the dribbling, one touch, volleys, and headers. We help players get comfortable performing these skills at game speed with pressure and with both their dominant and non-dominant foot. In addition, we help players with their speed of play, awareness of space, defenders and teammates, and also dominant with our off the ball movement. We offer a variety of services such as one-on-ones, small groups, large groups, as well as team sessions. We have an experienced coaching staff that is professional, friendly, patient, while still holding players to high standards and holding them accountable. 
No matter what level you're at as a player, I'm confident we can help you get better. Over the past three years, we've built one of the best soccer-specific training facilities in the country and developed one of the most detail-oriented programs to help out players. Visit our website. I'm a husband, I'm a father. I'm a sister. I'm a son, I'm a brother. I'm a daughter, I'm a sister. I'm a referee. I'm a referee. I'm a referee. I'm a referee. Welcome back here into Dick By Stadium. We're about to start the second half. It's 1 1. No in favor of anyone. A late first half goal by Ohio Elite. And that uh, tied this thing up. The third minute goal from the Nationals. And uh, we are getting ready here for the second half, Dan. And uh, it's so far been good, good, uh, good soccer so far. Yeah, the Nationals definitely control play over the first 40 minutes plus stoppage time. And the stoppage time was crucial because that's when the Ohio Elite netted the equalizer in the 41st minute there. The Nationals outshot Ohio Elite 9-1, to 5-1 to one on frame, 5 to nothing on corner kicks. But soccer's a strange game. You can dominate an entire half or entire game, but... Ohio Elite was able to cash in on its only opportunity, a breakaway feed into the box. So we're at a one-to-one -one tie here in the first minute of the second half, 41st minute. And that we are is Nationals in that white and blue kits. They're going right to left now on your screen. The Light blue and dark blue kits for the Ohio League going left to right. Shemby. Julian Gibbs out wide. Shemby. Actually, that's, I take that back. That's Brendan Sesti, number 13. Good turn. Lays it back. It's Brian Yu. All the way back now to France. Back to Sesti. And finally, that one poked away and out for a Nationals throw. Oh, they're going to say last touch off the Nationals. A oh, foul call. This so Nationals will have the ball. You always know it's cold out when even the referees get bundled up. Actually, it was, uh, it was not. It was not a foul. It was a foul throw. So picked up by you. Temperatures are increasing slightly here. Brendan Klein now. Sasti puts this one in the box, head towards the goalkeeper. That's now Washington, Avery Washington. Not to be mistaken for George Washington. 
I was actually saying that as I'm walking up asking parents about the goalkeepers for both sides here at the half, and someone said, it's Washington in goal, but not George Washington. You probably could say George Washington the rest of the game. And I said, you're probably right, but, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but either way. Sun is out. A oh, good ball, but that one's off sides as it finds its way into the back of the net. That was Julian Gibbs, who was in an offside position when he got control of that ball. I believe that was the first offsides of this contest. Well, Dan, you are the statistician here. You know, <laughs> that, is, you know that, is, that is one of your many roles during our broadcast. The other one is, is to supply all the treats and goodies, but you didn't do that today either, so it's like... Uh, yeah, I didn't. It's, it's okay. We should probably call it Granite City or something like that. You know, have them deliver some food. But... Uh, you know, the ECNL was founded back in 2009 as a challenge to the status quo of youth soccer with a vision to be better. In its first years, the league supported only girls' programming, but that was to change. As a result of grassroots collaboration and innovation driven by youth soccer leaders all across the country, the ECNL quickly rose to national prominence and ultimately to be the top level of competition and player development in the country. Each step was fueled by a shared commitment to elevating the youth soccer experience. So from its inception, Dan, the ECNL has consistently developed in alignment with the needs of its member clubs, always seeking opportunities to lead, provide, no matter the challenge or adversity. And uh, it's, um, you know, it's, it just goes to show you uh, how this game has changed, Dan, here over the years. Yeah, the ECNL, is, it's, you know, it's definitely growing. In all levels of club soccer are growing, and soccer in general. I mean, it's just amazing to think about. Oh, another ball, but the flag does go up again. And it's amazing to think about how many more opportunities youths and young adults have here in 2024 versus like when I played soccer growing up in the 1980s and then played in some like men's leagues throughout the 1990s. But so many levels of clubs, so many high quality clubs that are just keep expanding across the country. You have amateur leagues in the, for college age kids and, uh, you know, professional. You know, MLS and, and minor league levels to just keep expanding every year across the country. So for the, the whole soccer community, I mean, ECNL is, is just another great extension of that growing pyramid. As the level of soccer continues to develop and, you know, the level of play keeps getting better and better each passing year and decade. Their ball through that seam, and this one is going to collect it. It's onside into the 18, top of the 18. That's deflected by Ohio Elite, almost on goal. It looked like he was attempting a shot there. <laughs> and that one goes up and out for a corner. ECNL does stand for Elite Clubs National League. That's what it stands for. And, um, you know, it, 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 is, it is fastly growing. And as they have said, is one of the most prominent leagues for the youth environment in the country. So uh, another corner. I believe this is their sixth corner of the game. Sixth corner. They had five in the first half. That's how they were able to convert on their goal the third minute. This one comes in from Klein towards that near post, and there's a shot that goes wide. Just not enough mustard on that one. Nationals definitely have dominated in that department. We're in the 47th minute. They do have an 11 to one shots advantage, five to one on frame and six to nothing on corners. But as we saw just before the half and stoppage time at 40-24, Ohio Elite was able to tie this game up on their only scoring chance of the morning. Go, 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 go. Go. Another one comes into the box. This one will deflect. Washington will pick it up. Nationals continue to press here. We've seen them dangerous throughout this game. They've only allowed really one opportunity in this game, and that one opportunity was in fact, was in fact, uh, this one slots in. That's a good opportunity off the woodwork. So a good look. Perfectly slotted ball from the corner. Right to the six yard line, just the shot went off the frame. Off the crossbar. But yet another corner kick, Jonathan, the seventh of the match for the Nationals 08. As they continue to press here coming out of the gates, they conceded that late goal in stoppage time as Ohio Elite tied it up. Now the Nationals are working 
Hard to re try to take the lead. So this one played in, good ball. France is there, he gets a head on it. Another head from the Ohio Elite. Now it's cleared back to where it came from. And now finally cleared away by Ohio Elite and back over midfield. Picked up by Jack Kilpatrick. And then last touched off of Ohio Elite. Stanovic. Now one's going to go out, says the assistant referee on that far side. So end-to-end -end, well, end -end action, just action right now on one end. But again, at the end of the day, Dan, you know, execution is really important. And, you know, if you don't have a lot of opportunities, but execute on the few you do have, that's all that matters. Game of soccer, all you got to do is go on one goal to another team to win a game. And regardless of how Ohio Elite has played in this game, the limited opportunities that they have created for them, they have taken advantage of their one. And that right now is the difference in this game. It's 1-1. One, one. Uh, the Nationals had, have had a, 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 a plenty of opportunities in this one and only have one goal to show for it. Yeah, that's what makes sports like soccer and hockey so unique, that you can dominate a game possession-wise, shot-wise, just control the tempo but you make that one mistake and the other team's back in the contest. So a free kick coming up here, about 33 yards from goal. It's always helpful to have those football lines to give you the really, the, you know, the Craig yards. This one will hang up in the wind. Up goes Washington, can't bring it down, but does, is there a clean up it after that mistake? It's hard, you know, those ones will hang up, right? It's, when, it's, really, it's easier when a ball comes in, it's driven, you can kind of get the read of it. But when it hangs up like that, it makes you have to kind of make a decision about how far you can come out, where the play of the ball is going to be. Um, and, uh, and sure enough, uh, hard misreading that one from Washington, but able to recover and get that save on the rebound. Yeah, you've watched throughout the course of this match when the ball is kicked high, that wind is blowing east and southeast. It's a pretty powerful wind, and it's holding the ball up in the, in the air. So as you are a goalkeeper or defender trying to get a mark on the ball to make a clear or make a save or corral the ball, it's not as easy as it looks from up here in the stands and press box. The wind does have a huge factor. Hope you guys are enjoying the match at home. Wherever you're watching, near and far, while you're watching, tell us where you're watching from. You're, are you watching from Ohio? Are you watching from Michigan? Love to know where you're tuning in here today and watching this broadcast. Jonathan Turner, Dan Stickred are your commentators here today as you're watching the Ohio, Ohio Elite 08s and the National Soccer Club 08s on the Michigan Soccer Network. The Ohio Valley is the ECNL league that they play in. And the Ohio lead, as we talked about early in the first half. It's located in Westchester Township, about 15 to 20 miles straight north of Cincinnati, Ohio, right off I-75, suburban Cincinnati. So between Cincinnati and Dayton, Ohio. Another soccer hotbed. Just a reminder, the 11s game that is taking place right now on the field behind us is being recorded. It will be uploaded to our platform here later this afternoon. Difficulties with getting that stream up and going here at 8 o'clock did not happen. We will have the remaining game streamed here after that. So appreciate the patience on that. Joe Mo is watching from Oakland University. Appreciate that as well. Joe Mo will be on the call tomorrow here on field number two as well. Along with Alex Johnson. Alex Lubianski will be my color commentator tomorrow for tomorrow's games. Now here comes Kadu. Kadu cuts back on his right. Now attack to his left. He'll cut back inside and he'll just take down the defender. No foul called. Referee says, get up. Referee let him play. There's no, he's been consistent about that. 
would argue that maybe some of those might be calls, but hey, he's, he's either way on both sides of it, he's, he's been pretty fair in that regard. Klein, now to you. Played inside and yeah, the officials have definitely let a few things go here today. Been very consistent. So we're now in the 54th minute of this East OA matchup. Sesti drives it in and then Washington there to pick it up. If you're just joining us, one to one here in the match. Nationals a third minute goal. Ohio Lee was able to tie it up 24 seconds in the stoppage time at the end of the first half. That's all the scoring we've had, but the oh, Nationals hey. have control hey, play hey. and dominated the stat book. With an 11 to one shots advantage. Seven corner kicks on the morning. Sasti defended well by Ohio Lee. They're just managing the pressure right now and clearing up over midfield. And live here today from Avondale High School, Auburn Hills, Michigan. About 25 minutes from downtown Detroit, where in just a few short weeks, the NFL draft will be coming to town. Port Alex, give him some options. Let's go one, let's go one. Yeah, a lot of hype for the NFL draft. That's right, that's just a couple weeks away. Sesti once again, he has the ball. May look for that seam, he finds it. Down goes the Nationals player there in number nine, and that's Julian Gibbs. But now Kadu on the ball. Good little turn from Kadu. Top of the 18, trying to cut through traffic, met by a wall, and goes down. No foul there. I mean, he hasn't been calling those all day. You know, you'd have to. Kadu is pleading his case. There was a little bit of a jersey pull, but referee waved that off just outside the box. But the Nationals are pressing. They have yet to concede a shot, shot attempt in this half. They have control play for the entire match. Still trying to find a way to take an advantage after conceding that late goal in the stoppage time of the first half. So Yu tries to cut the corner, he does, and then gets the corner kick for the Nationals, their eighth of the game. So you can't say they haven't had opportunities, the Nationals, they scored up their first. Both teams actually scored on their very first opportunities of the game. I can't imagine this is their <laughs> last corner, but if they score off their first corner and then their last corner of the game, that'd be pretty uh, pretty good, right, Dan? Yeah. I feel like they got more coming, though, in their corner kick department. Yeah. This ball comes in. Oh, it's a good head off the goal line. It's a save, and Washington now has it in his hands. I believe that was France that got a head on that number four. Right to the left post, and Ohio Elite had a defender right on the goal line, able to clear that up away, and the goalkeeper. Doing exactly what he needed to do. That was his job. His job on that near post is to make sure that any ball coming back across is saved off the goal line. He did his job. Great work there is this ball cleared away. Ohio Elite is trying to find some consistency in their attack. They just haven't been able to really do anything. They have the win now with their back. They were able to score with the wind in their face in the first half. Come on, Vinny. It's a little more patience here in their attack now. They have possession. See if they can find a way to Keep this going for a few minutes, allow themselves maybe tire out this back line of the Nationals defensively. It's really hard to do when you don't have possession. It's just when it makes its way all the way back to the goalkeeper. That's Dobson now in goal here for, sorry, Dobner, Jack Dobner. It's part of the match brought to you by the Michigan Goalkeeper Academy. Take your goalkeeping to the next level. Register for the Michigan Goalkeeper Academy camps this summer. Visit MichiganGoalkeeperAcademy.com today to learn more. Is this one almost found its way to Klein? Try to clear that one out. Does not make it. Now it's Sassy. Sassy puts it in. Back post. Right there was Julian Gibbs. He's went over him. 
And now for a throw in. Can't say enough about this beautiful day, Dan. So far, I mean, it's. I mean, we say beautiful. It's not. It's not hot out, but it is definitely, definitely good. Temperatures have got a little bit better here. This game did kick off about 8:02 a.m. Still a lot of wind to the east and southeast. And had an effect on parts of this game, especially when the ball's high in the air. Come on, we gotta go! It's coming up here. Handball against the Nationals. In the second game, we'll, which obviously all of our schedules is scrolling down at the bottom of your screen during our, our ticker and our, our flipper. The 2009, sorry, 2009 are actually at 11. This next game taking place here is between the 07s. So the 07s will take place here in this second game. Skronthic Chatterjee is the head coach of the 07s. Scott Severing is the head coach of Ohio Elite. So that comes up here in game number two. Game three are the 09s. We'll have the 09s for you here in our third match of the day. From this first field, this main field. So 60th minute, 1-1. One, one. Work blue. Oh, sorry, Daniel Stevenson is in goal now, not Dobner. Dobner played in the first half. So I apologize. We got that one mixed up. But we appreciate it nonetheless for letting us know. Sixtieth minute, Jonathan of the 08 matchup featuring Ohio Elite and the Nationals and one to one draw at this point. The Nationals definitely have control play here in the first sixty minutes of the match. Seems like here comes another corner. As they prepare for their ninth corner kick of the game. Their first goal came following a, their very first corner on a goal mile scramble in the third minute. They've been very dangerous on their corner kicks, and we saw the last one here just a moment ago as Franz got a head on one. It was cleared off the line. So if they can find another way to get a good ball in here, take the lead as this one comes in. Good ball. That one's headed back to where it came from. Cut back. That one's cleared back out. Corner number 10. Got to have a nice even number if you're going to have... <laughs> The opportunities have definitely been there for the national side. Still trying to convert a second goal. They capitalize on the very first shot attempt of the morning, third minute. Now they have their 10th corner kick of the match. It's one to one tie. Comes the ball, goes back post. This one popped up, and that one out for a goal kick. So, two opportunities there. Nothing to show for it for the Nationals. Sun continues to rise here as it is 9.15 here in the morning. We've been here dancing 6.30 this morning, getting things set up. Could not get in the press box until about 6.45. It normally takes us about an hour to set up. So, when I say we were... Running it close here yeah, this morning. I was being understatement. <laughs> we, we, we try to get to the fields uh, about three hours before a game. When we're on location, if we're remote, it's different. Um, but uh, nonetheless, we were uh, unable to get this one, uh, the, this, the first stream on field number two going this morning. So uh, it is being recorded right now. That'll be live and uh, up, uploaded here later this afternoon. We'll try and get that uh, uploaded here once we're done here with the afternoon uh, here uh, at Avondale. And uh, the goal is to have the other two games going. We're going to have to probably put those up on uh, Facebook and Twitter. Uh, we'll get those going here at the conclusion of this one. As uh, Washington will put this one back in. A couple substitutions coming in. So 
Auburn, Thank you. Auburn Hills Avondale High School is the site, the place to be. We do have two games going on simultaneously at side-by-side -side, uh, turf fields here in Auburn Hills, Michigan, about 20 miles northwest of downtown Detroit. And the game we're watching right now is the 08 Ohio Elite and Nationals all tied up at one. So we enter the 64th minute of play. Oh, down goes Julian Gibbs. No call on the fall. That's par for the course in this one for this official. We'll put him back post towards Gibbs once again. Patty Key's right there, and then Yatuma puts one up off the upright, and that will be a goal kick. 14th shot of the match. For the Nationals, that one was high and wide. They do have a 7 1 advantage with shots on frame and a 10 0 advantage on corner kicks. 64th minute and counting. We're still at a 1 1 tie in the 08 matchup. Temperature is finally getting a little warmer, but that wind is not conceded. It's still going straight east and southeast. The Nationals pressing once again. Go! Come on, Carson! Go, Carson, go! Now here comes an opportunity. This one's cleared away by the goalkeeper and Stevenson. That's how the Ohio Elite was able to tie this game up in stoppage time on a breakaway feed on a through ball like that. Finds his way to Gibbs. Gibbs to cut back. Back to Yatuma. Yatuma. Down by the end line. Cuts it back. That one will go out. Flag goes up. Auburn Hills Avondale is a site. The high school is the Yellow Jackets, and the Nationals have been swarming since the opening minutes of this match. 14 1 on shots, 7 1 on frame, 10 0 on corner kicks, but they have not been able to convert since the third minute goal. They did concede a goal in the Stoppage time just before the half. We're at a one-to-one -one tie, and the Nationals finding, trying to find a way to separate themselves from the Ohio Elite 08. But their defense has been great, other than giving up the third-minute goal to the, to the Nationals. Off of our goal kick. Time is ticking, 67th minute. Get it, Carson. Come on. Get it. You gotta shut it down here, guys. Teams from the next game are warming up. You know, during the first half of this match, there was no teams warming up, so there was a lot of delays between some of these throw-ins and uh, restarts. Because there's no ball boys or ball girls here for the matches. Ball out wide on the far side. 68th minute. It's about 13 minutes to go in this one. One one the score. Will this end in a draw? Will one team find the flair for the dramatic as we are now in the 68th minute, one to one tie? 12 and a half minutes plus stoppage time. Nationals keeps pressing. 
Trying to find a way to solve the Rubik's Cube, which has been the defense of the Ohio Elite. Elite. After scoring in the third minute, they've been unable to convert again. for a throw in. This one cleared out. Yet another corner kick. Corner kick number 11 coming up for the Nationals. As we enter the 70th minute of play here. Well, this one to one stalemate. This one put in toward that back post and out it goes. Into Washington's hand. And there was a header there, a volley on the far side. Avery Washington was there to deny yet another attempt by the Nationals. Go, CJ! Uh, go get, get, get it, Carson! There. Get it back, get it back. Stop, put it down. Help out, Carson. Get it, Carson! Move, move, move! Get it! Yeah! Go! Good work as now finds his way to Kadu. Good switch by Kadu. Yutuma. He pulls back. Plays it back. Back to Yutuma. That's going to go out. Now we're entering this 72nd minute of play. Time is fleeting for both sides. We're at a one to one stalemate. This Ohio Valley matchup featuring the Ohio Elite 08 and the Nationals 08. Evans on the field behind us. We have two more rounds of games coming up here later this morning and it's this afternoon here. Auburn Hills Avondale High School is the place. Coming up here in the next game is the 2010s taking place in the field behind us. And then the 2007s will be, I believe, on this field with us. It will be. Those come up at about 9.45. My guess is it'll be a little late, but. Get up, Carson. Go, Carson. I'll get to him, Colin. Come on, make it happen here, man. The Michigan Soccer Network is the place. This is live on our YouTube channel. Let's go, Blue, stop it. News information regarding the soccer scene across the state of Michigan. Visit our website, michigansoccernetwork.com. Our YouTube channel has close to three years of games from club to MLS Next to high school to collegiate to various amateur levels, USL League Two, UPSL, and so many more. So it's all a penalty oh, kick here. Is called and, and just like that, the Nationals have a chance to take a lead with just seven minutes to go. 73rd minute. 
The Nationals player was taken down to the central part of the box. Penalty kick awarded. One to one draw at this point. Nationals have been swarming since the opening kickoff. They have had so many opportunities. 14 shots. Eight on frame, 11 corner kicks, but still trying to find a opportunity to net a second goal. The opportunity is arrived with a penalty kick. So looks like Kadu is gonna step up to take this one. Kadu was an All-State sophomore player at nearby Troy Athens High School last fall, which won the MHSAA Division I State Championship. Again, one of the top sophomores in the state of Michigan on the penalty stop to try to... Kadu steps up and puts it past Washington and the Nationals have now taken a 2-1 lead. Shot attempt number 16th is converted. Daniel Kaju of the Nationals puts the home side on top here at Auburn at Hills Avenue High School. Two to one over the Ohio lead 08. So we are now getting set to enter the 75th minute. Ohio elite is in danger. Only attempting one shot this whole game. It was a goal, a breakaway goal. 24 seconds in the stoppage time. They had just considered a second goal to the Nationals and had been unable to get a shot off here in the entire second half. Five minutes to go in this one. As the Nationals have taken a late lead. As this part of the match is brought to you by Evolution Soccer. This ball comes in and Dobner watches that one go wide. Build and perfect your skills and elevate your game to a new level. Book your sessions today at evolutionperformancetraining.com or call 248 795-5291. That's 248-795-5291. Or visit evolutionperformancetraining.com today. That is actually Daniel Stevenson in goal for the Nationals. I think you said, yeah, keep saying Dobner. <laughs> you said Dobner I know, I know, twice this half, Stevenson, and I've given you that, uh, I've given you that look. <laughs> I know, I know. My bad. <laughs> I'll get it right by tomorrow. <laughs> we'll see him again, maybe. Get it, Jack! Get it, Jack! So this one slots over, and then Kadu. Kadu, top of the 18, working his way around the Ohio Elite defenders. This one will be finally knocked out. Now for a goal kick, I'd assume it is. And Sometimes they say when you assume, you assume, you know. The... 9.45 game will be live on our platform here on YouTube. It will not be on any other platform, so we'll keep it where it was. <laughs> 2010s will be taking place. Very own Ryan Gagnon and his son will be on that field. There will be no commentary for those games today. Just give you the nice score bug and all the graphics to go with it. Side-by-side -side fields here at the Athletic Stadium at Auburn Hills Avondale. Unfortunately, on the back side of the press box, facing west to the other field, there are no windows, no opportunities to do color commentating for that contest. Down by the end line. Keeps it on the pitch, finds slots it. Oh, that one goes up and over. A beautiful opportunity to take a two-goal lead. Held on to the ball for too long. Had the, had the pass slotted into the middle of the box, six yards out, but he tried to control it, knock it over to his right side. And put it well over the crossbar. Actually, the ball was slightly deflected, so the num corner kick number 12 for the Nationals 08 
as we enter the 78th minute of play, 2-1 to one Nationals lead. Ball sailed through the, through the penalty box, out of bounds again. So corner kick number 13 for the Nationals as they hold on to their two to one lead here in the 79th minute of play. That's right, 79th minute, Dan. And they have, it's been all Nationals the second half. Ohio lead has been unable to generate a single shot. The Nationals got that Go ahead goal here a few minutes ago by a penalty kick. Tally from Daniel Cajou. And they're looking more and more like they're gonna walk away with a victory here in the 08 matchup. At the conclusion of this one, we will kick it and get ready for game number two coming up here in just about 10 minutes so we'll so sit tight for that and that's a hard tackle but all ball find his way looking for Gatuma. 80th minute of play of the 08 matchup Nationals up over Ohio Elite Third minute goal and a 74th minute goal. While the Ohio Elite was able to score 24 seconds in the stoppage time just before the end of the first half on their only shot attempt of the morning. Referee looking at his watch on his right list. So we're getting set in to enter stoppage time. few fouls and a penalty kick goal, so we should expect probably two to three minutes of stoppage time. If you're watching Ohio Valley ECNL Boys Soccer on the Michigan Soccer Network YouTube channel. If it's your first time stopping by, subscribe, like, and share, and tell your friends. Whether you're watching here in Ohio, Michigan, or beyond. Second minute is a stoppage time here at the end of the second half. The waning seconds as the referee keeps looking at his watch. Two to one Nationals over Ohio on, that was a good ball. Remember, the Nationals gave up a late goal in stoppage time in the first half so they can find a way to not let that one happen. They'll come out of here with a 2-1 victory here today. This one finds his way to Kane. Chase Blackmore on that far side. Can't be much time left in this one. Is now Ohio lead on that far side. Making a late push. See if they can get an equalizing goal. Clear it away. Referee looks at his watch. One back by the Nationals, and that's Yatuma. Finds Blackmore. Stanovich is that center Carson forward for the Nationals. The Another sweeping tackle, and that one will go out. Got to imagine, Dan, there's not much time left in this one. You know, we're 82 27 on the, on the monitor here, so. Shouldn't be any more than three minutes of stoppage time, I imagine. So we gotta be down in the final seconds. The referee has looked at his watch several times here. 
Calling a bad throw. That's the second time in this game we've seen a bad throw from Ohio Elite. It's one of those things that's like free throws in basketball, right? You know, yeah. as, you, you know, as you know, you just you know, or like traveling. You know, you just it's one of those things you just. I'm not saying traveling doesn't happen, right? But you, you, traveling maybe not the same comparison to a, a foul throw in in, in soccer, but yeah, it's one it's of the strange. easier ones, right? To not. Strange because we're not watching like U6 uh, recreational beginner yeah. soccer. This is high level club yeah. soccer to have, you know, bad throw ins is something you wouldn't expect to see. So now uh, officially in the fourth yeah, minute of boy. stoppage. Oh, Sun continues to be out in plain view here today. We didn't see much sun. Yesterday or the day before that, another bad throw. <laughs> and there is the final whistle, and the Nationals and the 08 side get the victory here in this one. Two to one. A goal in the third minute from Amra Herstanovich from the Nationals. An equalizing goal in the 40th from Ohio Elite. And then the last goal, a penalty shot in the 73rd minute, sorry, 73rd minute, gives the Nationals a 2-1 victory here today. Daniel Cadu gets that second goal for the Nationals, and that's where this game will come to an end. For all of us at the Michigan Soccer Network, we're going to head and get ready for game number two here of our three games on field number one. Game number two on field two. The 2010 is about to get underway here in just a few minutes. For all of us at the Michigan Soccer Network, so long and see you next time.